combinations and patterns. A typical structure is subjected to three main types of actions. These involve the permanent actions, variable actions, and the wing actions. These actions are to be considered under different combinations in order to simulate all kinds of possibility that the structures can be loaded. This is particularly important in the analysis of the structures in order to identify the worst case scenario acting on the structures. Basically, there are two types of stability analysis which involve the vertical load and the overturning load. Within the vertical load, the member can be in the form of simply supported beam or a continuous beam or for the entire frame. These chapters we will cover the analysis of all this kind of analysis. As for the vertical load for a simply supported beam, the calculations is rather straightforward. We will apply a maximum load of 1.35 and 1.5 GK and QK throughout the span of the member in the ultimate limit state and find the reactions of the member and then draw the shear force and bending moment diagram. In analysis for the serviceability limit state, the factor of safety is used as 1.0 for the GK and QK. This analysis normally will result a high moment at the mid-span of the beam and high shear force at the end of the beam. The structural element is designed against the maximum moment and maximum shear load for the entire beam. As for the continuous beam, which is subjected to the vertical load, Various combinations of the loads needs to be considered. You will need to run the analysis for several times in order to identify the most serious conditions acting on the structures. The combinations of the loads basically involve the maximum and minimum load. It can be applied as a maximum throughout or apply as the alternate maximum and minimum which is starting with the maximum or analyze as the alternate between maximum and minimum which started with minimum or by having two continuous bands with maximum which move along the spans determine the reactions due to the different combinations draw the shear force diagram for each of the load arrangement and the bending moment diagram for each load arrangement and then overlay the shear force and bending moment diagram together to produce the envelope shear force and bending moment diagram for the member while designing for the member, normally we look for the most critical shear force at the moment within their specific positions. Analyzing different kind of look conditions is necessary as the most critical look can happen along the member under different look conditions. The worst case scenario will be identified by superimposing all the shear force and bending moment diagram. What you see here, you have two load sets, load set 1 and load set 2. You may choose to use either set of the load 
arrangement for you to analyze the member. If you choose to use loop set 1 for a 4 span continuous beam, you would require to analyze at least 5 loop arrangements. The first two is the alternate between maximum and minimum. And then the later three is the two continuous maximum loop span which move along the members. If you have more span along the members, you will have more loop conditions to be analyzed. Alternatively, you may choose to use loop set 2. The loop set 2 analyze the maximum load for the entire span and then alternate the maximum and minimum with the starting of maximum and minimum for the second and third analysis. These two loop sets provide you systematic guidelines for you to run over the analysis for a continuous member that give you a higher possibility of determining the most critical situations acting on the member. As for the definitions of maximum and minimum load, the maximum load for the ultimate limit state involve 1.35 GK and 1.5 QK. And for the service limit state, it involves 1.0 GK and 1.0 QK. As for the minimum load conditions, the contributions of the variable actions has been ignored. This is logical due to the nature of the variable actions, which it may be there or may be not there. As for the permanent load, it will be always there. With that, the maximum load conditions are referring to the full arrangement of the variable actions, while the minimum conditions is assuming that there is no variable actions imposing on the structure. In comparison to simply supported beam, a continuous beam will involve a tedious long calculation which is typically conducted under different load conditions. It consumes long time for the manual calculations. However, with the help of Excel spreadsheet or some other computer simulation software, the result can be obtained instantaneously. Next, we look into the overturning loop acting on the structure. To analyze this kind of loop, first you need to determine the type of actions, whether it is permanent actions, variable actions, or wing actions. The reason being is there are different factors of safety to be applied due to different types of actions. Within each type of actions, there are favorable and unfavorable actions. The favorable actions will reduce the load that you would like to analyze, while the unfavorable actions it will increase the load that you are analyzing. The same set of actions may not necessarily always be favorable or unfavorable. Its status whether favorable or unfavorable is very much dependent on the type of load that you are analyzing. For example, if you are measuring the rotational point at B for the overturning load, these are favorable and unfavorable to the overturning moment here. However, if you analyze the wind loop in these directions for the overturning rotations at point A, 
the conditions whether favorable and unfavorable will change for that you will need to check the conditions carefully in order for you to define whether it is favorable or unfavorable this is important because the unfavorable actions normally will have a higher degree of factor of safety while the favorable conditions we will have lower degree of factors of safety for the variable actions which are favorable their contributions normally are ignored through this we maximize the situations which is unfavorable and minimize the situations which is favorable. This will give us the most critical situations that the structure could undergo under various kinds of actions. And then we need to test under different combinations of actions involving the permanent actions, variable actions, and also wing actions. These are the least four combinations that you need to consider for a structures, which involve the GK and QK alone, or GK and wing load alone, or combinations of GK, QK, and wing load. For the third and fourth conditions, we will need to define the leading variables and the accompanying variables. For the third conditions, we will use this as a leading variables while the wing as a accompanying variables. The accompanying variables will be multiplied with a reduction factor psi and then for the combination D, the wing now is considered as a leading variable while the variable actions is considered as a accompanying variable actions. With that, there will be a reduction factor of psi is applied to the variable actions. Among all these four combinations of the actions, the largest rotating moment that caused the structures to overturn is identified. With that, you may design the structures to resist the overturning moment.